company in a direction by saying we're going to position ourselves as the two minute pizza company over the next six or seven years. It took us into the main area that I saw the future of the business and it was working and working very well. Just to close off on a couple of points. There are a lot of retail businesses in Australia over the last 20 years that have been old, run down, tired, and they've been reborn. I'll give you an example. Flight Centre is one of them, right here beside us. No one could make money out of the travel industry and they came along and changed the way people thought about what they did with service and in particular with um, the culture of their people. There are other businesses, you know, probably a good example is the coffee industry. It's not like we ever complained there wasn't enough coffee shops around 15 years ago, but now they're taking over and all the pubs are closing down because men used to drink in pubs after work and talk about things and now we all have to go off and suck lattes with the ladies. <laughs> That's the way we communicate. The $2 shop, that didn't exist 15 years ago. Now you go to the $2 shop, it's got everything you never needed. <laughs> Fantastic. I go in there, I come up with a whole bag of shit I didn't even know existed. They're seeing the market differently to everybody else. And that was what we did with the pizza business. To close off today on, um, on a couple of points, um, after running the business for nearly 21 years, um, in 2007, I sold out of the company to a handful of the senior management and a uh, Brisbane-based venture capital group. Uh, I was very lucky that I was surrounded by a board of directors of people who were close enough to me to be able to say, it's probably time you stepped down, took a break, relaxed, and um, enjoyed life a bit more. And I must say that the business was starting to get on top of me. I was starting to lose the passion for it. And I was certainly starting to struggle with my health. So the business uh, was sold in March 2007, which is um, pretty much three years ago. I retired for the next uh, two and a half years. And in the last six months, I've gone back into business. Uh, now building 24 hour a day drive through bakeries here in Brisbane and I'm sure you'll see some very soon. The company's name is Crusty Devil Bakehouse. Uh, we've built one at Corina, we're opening up another one over at um, Cannon Hill in the next few weeks and um, I'm back in there having a bit of fun again. So I'll just close off with one really quick story. It's a good story to think about if you're going into business, right? Because it's a little bit about eating shit but sometimes you've got to do that to get where you've got to go. And it's about a kid and he's on his first day and he's uh, 16 years old and he's a door-to-door -door salesman. And he's really, really quite optimistic and happy about having his job on his first day. And everybody knows how difficult it is in sales and how many doors you can get slammed in your face. And he's in a small country town, it's the middle of winter and he's walking up the road and he's got a vacuum cleaner over his shoulder. He's selling vacuum cleaners door-to-door. -door. Very excited. As he's walking up the road, he looks across and he sees a sign and it's a housing estate with new homes in the housing estate. And he thinks, oh, housing estate, new homes, new carpets, fantastic. I'll be in there selling vacuum cleaners like a demon. And as he's running up the road, down one side there's all these beautiful new homes, and on the other side is a cow paddock. And an entrepreneurial light goes off in his head. So he drops the vacuum cleaner, jumps over the fence, grabs a chaff bucket, runs over to the cow paddock and starts filling up this, this chaff bucket with as much of that warm, green, slimy, wet, fly-blown cow shit he can get his hands on. Now he's really excited. He goes to the vacuum cleaner, he goes running up to the first door, he knocks on the door, and a woman opens the door and he goes, stand back lady, and he grabs his big bucket of warm, green, slimy, wet cow shit, and he throws it as far as he possibly can, boom, up the passageway, all over the shag pile carpet. He's really excited. <laughs> and he says, lady, if this vacuum cleaner doesn't pick up that shit, I'll eat it. <laughs> she goes, I'll get your knife and fork, we haven't got the electricity on yet. <laughs> So sometimes in business you've got to eat shit. Anyway, thank you for being patient. He's down there tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Probably just should mention one thing. I've, um, I bought a few copies of my book tonight, so if anybody's interested, um, I'm happy to sell you one and sign one for you. Thanks, Tom. One big round of applause for Tom. Fantastic. <laughs> Questions for a few minutes.
Um, and just before I lose the microphone, I'd just like to make a note on Tom's book. I actually read it a couple of months ago uh, before we tried to lock in Tom as a speaker, and it is an absolutely fantastic read. Um, it's got all those bits in it that Tom mentioned, but also the really funny little details in between. So have a look at it. Uh, are they on sale tonight? Yeah, yeah. They're on sale tonight. So come and have a look. Uh, but for now, Nick's got a, a microphone there. Put your hand in the air if you'd like to ask Tom a question, please. Thanks very much, Tom. Really, really enjoyed the, the presentation. Uh, a question that I have is, in light of over the last five years or so, the, um, the situation in terms of obesity in Australia, and uh, the uh, obviously you hear about tra like cases such as McDonald's changing their orders, being sued in the US, etc. Like, did that come from left field for you guys, and how did you sort of respond to that? And has it really impacted your business? I didn't respond to it. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> no, seriously, I didn't respond to it. I mean, as far as I was concerned, it's a choice. If you want to drink, if you want to smoke, if you want to eat greasy food, that's your choice. And I really went with that road. And, and um, you know, for pizza companies constantly going out there telling everybody that this is healthy and that's healthy, believe me, it's about 1% of the sales, maybe 5% during a promotion. I mean, it's got to be believable. And um, I, I was never, I mean, it's really interesting being in the bakery industry. I'm standing there behind the counter and I'm seeing these young women come in and they order cream buns and vanilla slices and sausage rolls. And this is at 7 o'clock in the morning. And i got to tell you, you just don't hear people coming in there saying, oh, you know, what do you got healthy? It's a bakery lady, what do you think? You know, so, yeah, I, I was always realistic about the business I was in. two-week courses they hold at Mount Eliza, you know, the, the, the executive um, programs. I mean, I went to Harvard for a month a year, for three years, and it was probably $35,000 a year to go and attend. But I've sent quite a lot of my guys off to uh, Monash University in Melbourne where they go and do two or three weeks a year. i got a great mate here in Brisbane who, his father ran a couple of supermarkets in Adelaide 30 years ago, and his father sent him off to Mount Eliza in a six-week program came back to his old man and said, this is bullshit, I know what we need to do. And he started Bilo. And um, the rest is history. Is that Victoria? Uh, yeah, Manalyzer, yeah. But they run quite a few programs. And I'm sure QUT and, and a few other good universities here also run. So I, I strongly recommend, particularly if you're a mature age student, you go and do those two and three weeks concentrated programs of executive education and business. I mean, that's what I did. And I thought it was awesome. It's great. Uh, Thanks. 
Probably read my book. Probably help as well. <laughs>